Hi, welcome back to the studio. I'm continuing on with rose number 15 here. So I've just, what I've done is just wiped off my palette here with a damp paper towel and I'm ready to rock and roll. Same thing we did here on rose number 14 here, uh, same background, same colors that are out here, Hansa yellow, yellow oxide, burnt sienna, naphthol red light, pine green, thalo blue, red violet, cranacridone violet, black and white. I haven't used black very much at all. Three quarter inch fusion filbert flat what I use for my background. So we're, we're continuing our work through the whole first part of this uh, series on the movement of the rose, showing you some pedaling type of techniques, but concentrating on the movement, because if you lose that movement, you lose the rose, okay? And preserving that bowl and stuff. I'm gonna show you a little different way this time, how important that movement is, okay? All right, so my normal background here, and we pick out a color. I think I'm gonna slide this back. I, I just got done with this one, which is just like very warm, and I do love to paint cool colors. So um, I'm going to head over to the cool color. Some phthalo blue, some white, and some quinacridone. I'm going to put a little extender into this, not to keep it wet, just so it slides around the, the, the uh, surface here for me quite a bit. I really want to lighten this up here. And I want this background color to stay a little wet on my palette for the 30 minutes. So I'll add a little extender in case I want to use it. Okay, it's just in case I want to use it. So let's push in some light color. I love the, the warm cool into the backgrounds on these paintings. I sometimes soften it off with a paper towel. We'll push a little bit of that around like that. I like those color marks uh, that uh, you can put on there. All right. So I'm going to keep that soft just like that. Now, the last one, the main one, kind of pointed this way. So we'll point this one up this way here. Let's start. I'm going to go back to, um, I'm going to paint, you know, usually what I do when I, with you is I'll go ahead and start to set the shape of the rose. And, um, and then we will uh, build from there, okay? And uh, this time I'm going to set that shape and stuff with some contrast. We're going to set contrast and then set softer colors up on top of it, determining what we want to do with the rose. So I'm going to take some red violet and my cornacridone together here. I'm going to push the rose right down in here. We'll do one, maybe two of these roses here. So that's going to set the center here. Then I'm just going to come right off the top of this right down in here to the bowl. That's going to set the, the cool, cool color of the bowl. And I'm going to pull out just a little bit on this side here like this as well. Okay, so you're going to see the center and you're going to see the bowl. It's actually, it's three circles. There's one, there's two, and then the outside petals here. This is the outside petals of the, of the third. But I'm going to concentrate on making a real high contrast here, right down in here, deep contrasting rows here. Okay, nice deep dark, nice deep dark. Now a, a color right in there and just push it a little bit right now for right now here. Now, yeah, maybe we'll set a smaller little bud over here. To do the bud, we always see the bud. The bud is just a little bit more of an oval shape here. And I'm just going to draw that bud just kind of like that. Just kind of leave that. Just right like that. Okay. Now, it when you're painting roses, they don't have to be perfect, perfect right away. Okay. And you can there's lots of techniques that we have that we can manipulate their shape here. I'm going to take some of that, the light here, white, right with, it, with the color I had in my brush of the two canacridones, lighten it up a bit. I'm going to warm it with a touch of yellow oxide right here, right like this, okay? Come right out here like this, and I'm going to apply a warm side right over here to the rose. And it's, I know it's going to look a little strange here for you guys. So I'm going to get a real cool side and a real warm side. Matter of fact, I'm going to push in just a little bit more cool right here. Now, so I have a warm side. This is my warm light side. This is my cool side that's right here. Now I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to push it into the shape of the bowl. If I want to, if I'm painting a queen with a very big light source, I would pull down this way and that would pull my white right down over that other side right there and push the coolness out. And you can see that nice softness. If I wanted to, if it was a rose in shadow, I would push up this way, pushing my shadow up. But you can see right here, as I push these two that were in high contrast together and I push them down like this, this is what makes the beautiful 
movement of the inside of the rows, see? So, and sometimes I'll do that a, a few times till I get a nice, uh, a nice, I want to say nice, decent amount of contrast. I'll push it on here. I'll, here's my bowl right here. I'm just going to push that right there like that, not too many times, and see the movement that I grab there just like that. That's a nice movement. Let's take a bit of our lighter, warmer color. Let's strike now right across the front like, like that. And now I'm going to push that gently right up into here like that and pull down just once each side. And that's incorporated that entire petal into that side of the rose. If I come out over to this side, I will want to create more cool. So here's my warm, here's my cool. Let's put a stroke or two of cool right over here like this and push that right into that. That softens that side of the rose here like that. You want to soften that mark back there, you know. I like to leave them sometimes because that's the real casual nature of the, of the, you know, the flowers and roses that I paint. But uh, some of you want to have it, you know, more um, uh, soft. So you can just hit a little bit of color up over there. You can even soften it. Take a touch of your blue into that color. That takes that blue closer to that and you can lose that back edge of that rose, see? You can do that. That gives you that nice lost back edge. Lots of different things that you can do, okay? But um, let's come back over here. This is our warm side. This is our cool side. Here's our lights here, okay? And let me go through this real quick. I'm going to take a lot of color, a lot of color. See, it's very thick on my brush here. And I'm going to strike the front outside petal here like that. And then I'm going to push that in and out just a bit. See that beautiful movement that's there on that rose. That is what makes the pretty rose. That movement that you see. Right? I've been trying for the last, you know, 14 and now into the 15th lesson to get you to paint movement into it. Look for the movement. Now I love that dirty paint that's on my finger from doing it over here because it just pushed into that rose and created something that I'll never be able to paint exactly the same again. But it does make a pretty rose on this one. And let's drop some of this warm color right over the top here like this. Okay, right over that edge. We'll reset anything that we want. Let's put a little bit of the blue into that yellow right here and make that soft color transition as this rose is coming around the corner here right to the top. So I'm looking for that transition of that color. Let's go back into some warm, some additional white. Let's strike across the front of this right here. Put in that nice light stroke. Maybe another stroke of light right there for a bit of a petal, just like that, okay? You paint powerful, you paint fast, you paint with lots of paint, and you don't play with it. Don't play with it. Hit that, I'll reset that light right there. That's kind of pretty. Let's pull in some petals in here. And to facilitate it, sometimes I'll push the cool into my brush and push those in. Push that movement in. See, that's a pretty rose. Let's take some of that light and the cool and just come down here like this and put a few curving little petals in. A little more cool color here. Soften the center of that rose a bit here like that. Okay. Very different, but you can see from the power by putting it in. If, if you have a problem with not getting enough movement and interest in your rose, paint a higher span of contrast from a light to a real dark and push them together and watch until you can start seeing the movement that you're making in your flowers. In, in, you know, all flowers, whether they're irises or whatever it is you're going to paint, are going to have movement. And as an artist, one of the first things I do when someone says, hey, can you, can you paint me an iris or, you know, can you go paint me some dahlias or something like that is I start looking for the movement that I see within the flower. So let's put a little more light, boom, right across like that. Okay, let's put a bit of that cool color right there and just push up just a bit here. I'm watching that movement, preserving that movement there like that. That's pretty good. That works pretty good. 
Now, if I, if I ever want to change anything around in here, let's say I wanted to change a little bit more in there, I would probably reset a, a, a darker, more contrasting bowl. That helps me see the rows. See, if I set that bowl back in there like that, you can see the rows a little bit better. And you can smooth out without your finger. You could use your brush too. I can take a lighter color like this. Don't pull too many times, but because the brush will blend easier than your finger does. And just pull down a couple of times like that. Pull out a little bit on that reaching part of it. But you can reset a a um, a little bit more of a bowl over here to make a, a bit darker or more contrast or something. Find a light color and soften it with your brush. You know, each one of these challenges, you don't have to paint it once. You can paint each one of these roses a couple times until you find a really good way for yourself too. You know, this is part of the, the beauty of discovery of how you're going to find the painting of your roses as well. Let's take a little more light here. Just drop it down this side of the rose here, up on that side. See, it makes a very different looking rose with light and dark contrast there. Drop that up and around here. That's kind of pretty. We'll build out just a touch more light here. Pull out maybe. Sometimes I just love just to pull out and let that rose just soften out over there like that. Let's build a little bit more light, warmth, pulling down there. Just a touch more heavy paint. There, see how that's shaping the rose that I want here? In and out. There we go. Kind of a nice pretty little color there like that. Let's go paint a quick little bud, some nice warm color. So we have the dark, we'll set the warm color in like this, into that V shape, right like that, okay? We'll push that up and around, push that right into that other color right there, see? I'm gonna let this one stay a little more translucent. When I push it like that, it's going right out into the blue, and so it'll stay, it won't, it'll carry the color of the main rose, but it won't won't uh, distract from it too much. So I'll pull a few little things out here, maybe a, a few little uh, edges of some cool petal here, out like that. But for the most part, I won't do that much because I don't really need to do too much to this rose because this makes this a rosebud. This, you see the other one as a rose. I don't have to paint really strict here shapes to make this a rosebud. Maybe I'll put a little bit more of that bowl right there, right like that. Soften that out and that makes it, it it's just by a few little strokes like that you get the, the look of the rosebud, okay? So let's come in here with some green and some of this softer blue, maybe some violets in here like this and it'll make a different color here for some of our leaves. And you can negative paint up around here like this with this color. Push that in. I love the real casual Lost Nation. There are some people that just that love to paint them more smooth. And you know, you can do that as well. You know, that's all up to you. That's easy to control. But I love the, the power and the movement that uh, comes from doing the, frac the, the broken and fracturing of color you know, that Pettit showed us so many years ago, and and uh, all of the Impressionists, the French Impressionists painted like that. Just a real different way here. Let's get this a little bit of blue, a little bit of violet, red violet, darker color right in here. Makes a different set of coloring here. And uh, we'll set out a different little uh, stem line movement here you can push now see if I want to create it's because I have enough wet everywhere around here if I want to this is how important that using lots of colors if I want to create a more translucent push this into a more translucent effect over here onto this side I'll 
put some color down. I'm going to wipe my finger so it's semi-clean here and push those together. And that gives you that translucent effect of that rose there fading away into that side. Do you see that? Now, I can come back in. We'll clean that out for a second. With a little bit of light color onto the cool side here like this and just lightly pull in like this and just the tips, touch and lift off, touch and lift off here like this, and you can create the look of more translucent petals. There's a bunch of different techniques that I use to create the look of a, of a translucent petal when they're really not. I'm not painting with transparent color at all. And I learned that I learned that when I was painting and, and trying to get these roses, I learned it from portraits from the the, the expatriate painter John Singer Sargent, who is like you know the ultimate uh, Victorian era pa uh, portrait painter. And he said at one time, he said, "You don't trick the eye by just putting thin color over an area to make it look transparent." It's the optics of the colors that are mixing that make it look transparent. And so I sat there and I thought about that for the longest time. And then I was like, I understand. And I realized, so I started painting more translucent roses that were actually very thick color paintings. But it's what pigments you use and how you use them that give them that look. So we'll just put a little bit of color there like that. That's kind of pretty. But see, that all that color works there. And all of this now makes this whole area in here look like it's part of the rose, very translucent. And all of this started out with a huge contrast, a huge amount of contrast into our roses. So let's come back here. Let's drop in a little more contrast. Now see, that's negative painting here. We'll drop our, our stem line continuing through here, a few little dabs and dashes the brush dance coming off to the sides. Do you want to have a uh, more precision leaf out here? Let's do that. Let's push a couple of strokes. One this way, one down, one that way. Pick up a little more paint, maybe a little extender just to make the brush slide because I'm not blending. Here, push that on that way. Wipe that down just a bit. That looks kind of pretty. There, and we'll come back over here. Let's use a little bit of negative painting over here to shape up the bottom part of our rosebud over here. A little bit of color coming out, a little movement here. Like, see, I like these little dibs and movements here, especially get some of that violet in there. That just to me, that just adds just so much. Now, you could put some light colored leaves there on top. I don't think I'll do that this time. I mean, we've done that before. You've seen that. I think I'll just turn this and shape some of this a, a bit more into a leaf here. A uh, leaf coming out this way, maybe one right out here like that. And uh, just let that just kind of fall apart on that side. There, so you get the idea of a leaf, more impressionism, more impressionistic. The more I paint impressionism, and or um, what is what a lot of artists call themselves today, the representational artist. The more in which I paint that, the more I, I really truly enjoy it. We are painting an idea that, so that when you look at it, it looks like something, you know, like a rose and stuff like that but you don't paint it so precise stuff. It's more representational of it. That, that came out kind of quick. Now, so you see, when we paint like that, it goes really quick. Now, I might just put on darker ones this time, a little darker uh, vein lines, but I do like to put on the little vein lines just for the movement of the, you know, because it just takes subtly, so, so watch it right now. And I'll put this on and it'll take your eye out. Just that little mark just takes your eye out. And it's those little things that make the paint, that just add an extra little bit to that painting and make it quite pretty, okay? So when you're looking at a painting like this, you know, when you and look at what I just did here, we did it in just, just under 20 minutes. Faster, it's faster than some of the other roses.
Um, and when I, you know, as a teacher, and I've been teaching roses and painting roses and defining and developing roses for, you know, 35, 40 years, um, they, I'm trying to find ways in which to really show you how to paint roses. And a lot of everyone just follows along and tries to copy. And the most important thing that I found is movement. And with myself, uh, like I've noticed some of you that, you know, have posted some of your roses and stuff like that, they're beautiful. And the growth, I see the growth and I see everything that you're doing. And it's working great. Um, but you're still playing too much, okay? And so, and when I was thinking about this before I came into the into the studio today to paint this, I said, okay, one of the techniques that I use to help me see that a little bit more is instead of using my colors so close together, which means, in other words, if I use a value 6 and a value 8, they will blend together real close, real fast, because there's not much contrast. So, and when I do that, I lose that movement. So what I started to do was separate out my colors, making them more difficult to blend. And then I would only give myself like three strokes of the brush to put those together. Or you do something like I do here. Put down the colors here, a real light side, warm, a real cool side, and then push them together. And only do it a couple of times because all that movement is going to dry down and soften down. The rose is going to soften down anyway, okay? And it doesn't take that much. But pushing more contrast between your colors and then pushing, you're looking for that marbleizing. That's the best way to call that. You know how you look like a marble counter in your kitchen or something like that? You want that marbleizing look, that movement. It's that movement in that marble that your eye tracks along. Does that make sense? Your eye tracks along that and it gets really interesting, okay? What we have to do is put that movement into our roses, but in where the petals are gonna be. So we're shaping it to the bowl. We're shaping it to the reaching petals. We're shaping it to our center here, that center and the bowl and reaching petals. And it's a lot of fun. So when you do that, they paint even faster. So we could even go to 20 minute roses if we wanted to. No, I'm, we're not gonna do that. But uh, you can see that you can do that, okay? They're a lot of fun. We have a long ways to go. As we come through some of the uh, next videos, we're gonna be painting up, how do you paint some closed up roses and stuff onto the inside, you know, making some different degrees of opening up. How do you do what we call weave the rose petals together and stuff. There's going to be some of that. But I want to stay on this movement just through a few more videos and until it's just part of us. Because once we understand the movement, we can paint anything. All right? Okay. I'll see you on the next rose, rose number 16. Thanks for joining me. Oh, and Jessica's always, <laughs> Jessica's always telling me to uh, remind you to... Uh, Go over and see the Jansen Art Online, the Rose Challenge over on Jansen Art Online. There, There's color photos of everything that I do, so you can download a nice high quality color photo and uh, you know make a print for you to study it. Don't copy it, just make a print so you can study it and look at the movement and start studying for the movement, okay? And uh, as always, if you have any kind of questions or anything, make comments. You can comment on the YouTube channel. We ha we really hope that you do that. Take a few moments, write a comment, click the like button because that helps our distribution of our videos, okay? So please just take a few moments and do that. You will help us out a lot, okay? All right, I'll see you on Rose 16.